Okay, sorry about that. All right, good morning. Okay, so yesterday, supposedly you turned in less than 5-2. Um, just to let you know, I wasn't real happy with fourth period. Um, they had a lot of questions that they just weren't asking. And when I asked them, they didn't know what they were doing. So make sure you ask questions at the beginning of class if you're having problems. Um, I did include the, the, pro the answers for the box problem. Um, there were some questions about um, problem number 13 in your book. And I started that problem out. So number 13 in the book, if, if you, if you want to see that, let me know and I can send it out on Remind. Today, we're going to spend most of the period working on the review for 5.2. Um, and we're going to have an exam on Friday morning at 8 on 5.2. Okay, so with that, we are going to work on the review for lesson 5.2 test, all period. But I want to take questions first about anything. Um, before I take the questions, I want to answer some questions. First of all, when they ask you to use a graphing calculator, you already use a graphing calculator. However, if they ask you to sketch, you have to do it by hand. So they're not going to tell you find the in behavior, find the x intercepts, find the multiple. They're not going to say any of that. You have to know what to do. So in higher level math classes, they're, they're not going to give you all these tips. You have to know what you're doing. So if they ask you to sketch, you first of all need to know the degree. Is it a cubic? Is it a quartic, quintic, seven degree, nine degree? What's the degree? Number one. Number two, you have to be able to find the in behavior. So what's the in behavior? Number three, what are the X intercepts? And number four, what is the multiplicity? Now, on my answers in the key for the review, um, I did this above and below. We did, I did not teach it that way, so don't get confused with the key. Um, I taught multiplicity is better than these intervals. Now, there's some confusion, and I want to get this cleared up. Let's say that the x-intercepts are 1, 1, 1, 1, um, 3, 3. Now let's do 2, 2, 2. Well, when you write a set, you can reuse elements, so scratch all the duplicates out. So when you find the multiplicity, you're not looking at the numbers. Like you're not saying one is odd, two is even. You're not looking at that. You're looking at the, the number of repeats. So how many times does one repeat? Four. Four. Right, and four is even. That means it's tangent or touches and turns. So we're not saying one is odd. We're saying the number of time it repeats is even, which makes it tangent at one, the graph. Okay, now what's happening with the graph at two? I don't know. Well, how many times does two repeat? Three. That's odd, right? So that means it crosses. So when you do the graph, at one, it's going to touch and turn. At two, it's going to cross. And when you write this answer, you cross out the duplicates because they can be reused in a set. Okay, now just a comment about the turning points. If you have a ninth degree polynomial, you have nine solutions. But the number of turning points is eight. Now, that does not mean you have eight. It means you have at most eight. So you could have four turning points. You could have six turning points. You have to look at the graph. But there's at most eight. 
Okay, and one more thing. When you're looking at global maxes and mins, global means if you have more than one and it's the highest point, or a global minimum would be the lowest point. But you guys, do you guys remember what I said? That if you have an odd function like x cubed, x to the fifth, x to the seventh, x to the ninth, there are no globals. So you don't need to worry about globals with odd degree functions. They only come in even degree functions, right? Like the quartic, the, the sixth degree, the eighth degree, the tenth degree. There are no globals with odd degree functions. Okay, now I'm gonna take questions from you. All right, so what are your questions? Would anyone like to do a problem from the book that you turned in last night? Questions? Uh, I don't have anything to ask. Me neither. Okay. Okay, well, we're going to see. So we're going to go into the teams. It's about 11 o'clock. And class is over today at 1210. So we're going to work and for almost an hour until 1155. And we're going to come back and for 15 minutes, I'm going to answer your questions as a, as a class, because last fourth period, there were a lot of questions. So. So just remember that when they ask you to sketch, you have to do it by hand. If you use a calculator on the exam, I'm going to mark the problem wrong. I don't care if you do get it right. So if they ask you to sketch it, you have to find all the information, what's the degree, what's the M behavior, what are the X intercepts, and what about the multiplicity? You have to do the graphs by hand. You cannot take them and put them in the calculator. Only on the problems that say put them in the calculator. Okay, so we will report back to WebEx at 1155. That gives you a lot of time to work on the review. If you're somebody who's confused, make sure you ask your group and find out. Uh, make sure you're talking out loud and working through the review as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Okay, I'll see you in the Teams. All right, hopefully you're returning. Okay, so what are we still confused about? Questions? Can you explain the concept of local and global points? I don't understand when to use either. Well, I understand when to use global, but I don't understand how to use local. Okay, well, everything is local, everything. So the only time you have a global is when you have an even function and you have more than one max or min and it's the highest or the lowest. So every, everything else is a local. So the only time, you, only time you have a global is when you have an even function, even degree, and you have more than one maximum or minimums. So a global would be the highest or the lowest point. So look at number two. 
So on number two, A, B, and C are odd degree. They're all cubics. So there would be no globals. However, on 2D, you have f of x is equal to negative x cubed times x plus 1 quantity squared times x minus 2. And they're asking for you to put this on a graphing calculator. And when you put this on a graphing calculator, it looks, well, there's, there's a, a, a zero is zero. There's a solution at negative one. And there's also a solution at two. And the graph looks like this. Okay, so the first thing you want to know is what is the degree of this polynomial? So you have three x intercepts there, well, zero, 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 negative one, negative one, and two. So what's the degree? Six. So there's at most five turning points. Well, we only see one, two, three turning points. So we see a turning point there. I'm sorry. Yeah, so we see a turning point there. We see a turning point there. And we see a turning point there. So we see three turning points. And since there's three turning points, we would either have, we'd have a combination of maximum, maximum and minimum. So what, what would this be called? Since you have two maximums, you have two maximums, one there and one there, what would this one be? Global max. That makes the other one, one local max. And that would be a what? One local min. So those are the answers they're looking for and the fact that there's three turning points. So remember there's at most five, there, there's at most five, but you may not see five. And in this case, we only see three. We see one, two, three. And a six degree polynomial should have been going up like that on both ends, but because it was reflected, it's going down on both ends. Do you, do you understand or no? Yeah, I understand it now. So if you had, if you had a function that looked like this, You have a turning point there, 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 and you're guessing that this is probably a seven degree polynomial. But are any of these global? Like, is this a global maximum? Is this a local and no. global minimum? Why not? Why not? This is the highest point for the it's maximum. An it's an odd function. An odd function doesn't have any globals. So an odd function. And you also know that this is an odd function because it's going down and then up. Evens don't do that. So when you have a fourth, a quartic, a sixth degree, an eighth degree, a tenth degree, they don't go down and then up. Only the odd degree functions go down and up or up and then down. So odd functions do not have global anything. So go ahead, I'm listening. Other questions? I also had a question for number four and five. All we had to do was write the 
um, equation, right? The function, or did we have to do two steps? Problem number four. Yeah, they're asking you to write. So get now, given the graph, we didn't do any of these. Um, given the graph, you have to write the function. So on the first problem, number 4a, what are the x-intercepts? Go ahead, Missing. What are the x-intercepts on 4a? Negative 2, 1, and 3. All right, now look at this function. Does this look like an odd? What, what degree do you think this is? Do you think that this is an even degree or an odd degree? It's going down and then up. Odd. So it's it could be x cubed. It could be x to the fifth. It could be x to the seventh. It could be x to the ninth. So what do you think it is? You have to write the function now. So what do you think it is? Well, isn't the graph crossing at all the intercepts? So doesn't yeah. that mean this multiplicity is one, multiplicity one, multiplicity one? So it'd be cubed. To cube it. So what is it? It's x plus two times x minus one times x minus three, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do number, let's do 5b. So let's do 5b. So this is requiring like previous knowledge, right? About what's going on here. So 5B, what are the x-intercepts? Negative two and positive one. Negative two and positive one. Okay. Now, look at the graph. What does that look like to you? It's reflected. It's reflected. So that means when we write our function, we better put a negative in front. Okay, now what does that look like? Does that look like a quadratic? Does it look like a quartic? Does it look like a six degree? What does it look like? A quartic. Why? What does a quartic look like? Doesn't it look like a W? Yeah, it also has three turning points. And this one looks like what? An M? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. So, so if it's a quartic, we need four solutions. So that means some of these are repeated. Well, what's happening at negative two? It touches. It touches. It, so doesn't that mean that it, it could be a two, four, six, or eight? Yeah. Okay, what's happening at one? Touches. Touches. So would this function match this graph? Yeah. Well, you have it reflected. This is negative two that touches and turns. This is a positive one that touches and turns and it's a quartic and you said it was a quartic. So wouldn't this match what you're seeing? Yes yeah. or no? Yeah. Yeah. So do you see, do you see what's so, going on here? So you're looking at the yeah. graph. It's also telling you in the problem, look at, we, we did it at a heart, but look at in number four, it says it's a cubic. In number five, it says it's a quartic. So that gives you a bunch of tips. They're straight out telling you it's a cubic or a quartic. You don't even have to figure this out. They're telling you it is, right? Yeah. yeah. So if they're telling you it's a cubic, you need three solutions, right? If they're telling you it's a quartic, don't you need four solutions? Yep. I think it'd be repeated, right? Yeah. 
Okay, do you want to do another one? Of the, you want to do 4A or you want to do 4A or B? Yeah. Okay, let's just write down what we see. So what are the x-intercepts? Now they want us, to, they want us to write a cubic. Negative two. Positive one, positive three. Okay, so there's three solutions. How many should you have? Three. Three. So that means none of them are repeated, right? So it means these have a multiplicity of one. So how would you write the function then? Well, there's no reflection. So what would you write? Uh, X plus two times X minus one times X minus, X three. minus three. That's a cubic, right? You have three solutions, multiplicity of one, right? Yeah. So you don't need to worry. All you need to worry about are cubics and cortex. Number four are the cubics, and number five A and B are the. These are the cubics, and the five A and B are the cortex. Questions? No, I can come up. Yeah, I get it. What about everybody else? Any questions about any of the problems, domain range, in behavior, or multiplicity? Anybody else? All right, I guess that's it then. You guys have a good day. Have a good day. You too, Miss Birch. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Have a good day. Bye guys. Have a good one. Bye. Bye guys.